Well, good morning, everybody. Yeah, man, I'm Mr. Garfield here. So we're back with the Cape Integrated Maths Module 1, all right, paper. Module 1, 2019 paper, all right, and we're focused on the multiple choice then. Okay, so let's go, let's go into it. Number one says, this item refers to the following argon diagram. All right, which of the following complex numbers is represented on the argon diagram? So you should know that the argon diagram is basically like the Cartesian plane, all right, that you would have used to represent your coordinates X and Y, all right? But the argon diagram is used to represent complex numbers, okay? So it says, which of the following complex numbers is represented on the argon diagram? Okay, let's look at this now. So you should know that for a complex number, it is written in the form Z is equal to X plus YI, all right? Where the real part of the complex number, the real part of Z is equal to X, all right? So X is called the real part of the complex number and the imaginary part of the complex number is y, that's the coefficient of i, okay? Good. So with that being said, we're going to find this complex number. We're gonna write this complex number. So z is equal to, so it's the real part first, which is x, all right? So, so here we have the real axis. So the real part is one, all right? And then we have the imaginary part, all right? We have the imaginary part, so our imaginary part here is negative four, okay? So we have negative four and that's where we put the i. So z is equal to one minus four i, which is a, all right? So a is our answer there. So we're finished with question one. Question two says, if z is equal to one plus square root of three i, or i times the square root of three, same thing, then the argument of the complex number z is equal to? Okay, so when you're finding the argument of the complex number, the first thing that you should do is to find out which quadrant this complex number is in, all right? Find out what quadrant it is in. So let me just do a little sketch here. Let's say that this is the real part of the complex number z and that is the real axis of the complex number Z. And this is the imaginary axis of the complex number Z. Now, it is one plus I times the square root of three. So the, so the real part is one, all right, positive one. And the imaginary part is the square root of three, which is somewhere up here, all right? Somewhere up here. So this is going to be the complex number in the first quadrant, okay? So since it is in the first quadrant, you should know that the angles in the first quadrant is going to be greater than zero, but less than 90 degrees, all right? So that is an acute angle. So the argument of the complex number Z is equal to, all right? The argument of the complex number Z is equal to tan inverse, so we're using the inverse tan function. So it's a tan inverse of the imaginary part of the complex number Z divided by the real part of the complex number Z. Okay, so with that being said, the argument of Z is equal to the tan inverse, all right, of the real part, sorry, the imaginary part, the imaginary part is a coefficient of i, which is square root three, that's the number in front of i. So it's going to be the square root of three, and the real part here is one, right? So it's just square root three divided by one, or just square root three. Now, in the question, in the, in the, in the answer choices, you can see that all the angles here are in radian measure. So it means that we, our answer need to be in radians. So argument of Z is equal to, now in order to get the radian answer, all right, the radian measure, 
you need to ensure that your scientific calculator is in radian mode, all right? If it is in degree mode, it means that your answer will be in degrees. So you have to put it in radian mode in order for it to get the answer in radians. So the tan inverse of square root three is pi over three radians. All right, pi over three radians. And that is C. So C is my answer there. So we're finished with question two. Let's take a question three now. All right, I'm just doing the first, the first three questions on the multiple choice paper. Number three says this item refers to the following quadratic graph. So here we have our quadratic graph. And it says the quadratic graph represents the function f of x is equal to, and it gives us the answers here. So which one of these is our answers now? Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do is just to write the general form of a quadratic expression here on the right hand side. All right. So if I have f of x, let me do that in blue. If I have f of x is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c, that is known as the general form of a, of a quadratic expression, all right, or the standard form of the expression. So where a, so a, b, and c are real numbers. All right, let's just make that clear. a, b, and c are real numbers. So what do we have here now? So the constant C here at the end, all right, the C is called, so C is called the y-intercept, the y-intercept, all right? The y-intercept, meaning where the graph cuts the y-axis. So clearly you can see that the graph cuts the y-axis right here, all right, at negative three. So it means that our value C is negative three, okay? Now, since our C value is negative three, it means that I can cross out B and I can cross out C because those two answers there, they have positive three at the end as the constant. So those, none of those can be my answer. So it means that my answer is going to be either A or D. Okay, so let's look at the graph again. Now for the x-intercepts, meaning where the graph cuts the x-axis, you can clearly see that the, the graph cuts the x-axis right here, all right? That's negative a half, and it cuts the x-axis here, which is positive three, okay? So it means that the roots are negative a half and x equal three. So the roots, so the roots are x is equal to negative a half and x is equal to three, okay? Now, in order to find our answer, we can use the knowledge of the factor theorem, okay? What does the factor theorem say? So if I should plug in any of these x values, all right, when I plug in negative a half and three, into the function, I must get zero as my output, okay? So all I have to do is just substitute x is equal to negative a half into the into a or and d and see which one of them is going to be equal to zero, okay? So both of these should work out to zero. Um, when you plug in x equal negative a half, it should get zero. And when you plug in x equals three, you should also get zero. Let's look at it. Let's choose A, the first one here. So it says that f of x is equal to 2x squared plus 5x minus 3. And we're substituting f of negative a half, right? x equal negative a half. So if you do that, now you're substituting x as negative a half. So here you're going to have negative a half squared plus 5 multiplied by negative a half minus three. Now, if you put that value in a calculator, okay, you will get positive five. Positive five is not zero, all right? So it means that, so it means that I can cross out A. 
okay? I can cross out A because I know from the factor theorem that if I should plug in X equal negative a half, I'm supposed to get zero as my output because in the graph, negative a half, X equal negative a half is a root, okay? X equal negative a half is a root. So when we say it is a root, we just mean that when we substitute negative a half into the function, we must get zero, okay? So therefore, it means that my answer is D, okay? You can try it for yourself. When you plug in negative a half into the function there, you should get zero. And when you plug in X is equal to three, you should also get zero, okay? You can verify that right now in your calculator. All right, so those are the solution to number one, two, and three of the multiple choice questions, all right, for the 2019 past paper, all right? So yeah, man, so just ensure that you know, share the video, all right, and like up the video as well. I am Mr. Garth Reed, student ambassador at the University of Technology in Jamaica, and I'm a mathematics teacher in training in the School of Mathematics and statistics. I thank you for joining.